Good morning everybody, welcome to the thought for the day for Friday the 28th of April. Uh, it's really good to see you guys this morning. Uh, today's reading is Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 12 to 26 and it goes like this. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you and increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the crops of your land, your grain, new wine, olive oil, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. You will be blessed more than any other people. None of your, none of your men or women will be childless, nor will any of your livestock be without young. The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict you on the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. You must destroy all the peoples the Lord your God gives over to you. Do not look on them with pity and do not serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. You may say to yourselves, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh, in, did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the peoples you now fear. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornets among them until even the survivors who hide from you have perished. Do not be terrified by them, for the Lord your God who is among you is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, throwing them into great confusion until they are destroyed. He will give their kings into your hand, and you will wipe out their names from under heaven. No one will be able to stand up against you, you will destroy them. The images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver or gold on them, and do not take it for yourselves, or you will be ensnared by it, for it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring a detestable thing to the, into your house, or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Regard it as vile and utterly detest it, for it is set apart for destruction. Uh, I thought this was a really great reading in Deuteronomy. Uh, in verses 1 to 11, so the, the chunk just before the bit that I read, um, Moses outlines the rules um, that the Israelites should um, are... Moses outlines the rules the Israelites are to follow and then from verse 12 onwards which is what I read this morning um, he spells out then the various blessings promised by God to those who faithfully obey him. So verses 12 to 16 are all about God's blessings. Verses 17 to 24 are all about having confidence in God's strength and then 25 and 26 um, do not share in their abominations. Um, and this reading today uh, reminded me of a study that we did in our home group this week um, about being called to follow Jesus. Matthew 4, 18 to 22, we hear Jesus calling Simon and Andrew um, and then James and John. He says, follow me. And they do. Matthew 9, 9, Jesus calls Matthew saying, follow me. John 1, 43, Jesus calls Philip saying, follow me. And Mark 2, 14, Jesus calls Levi to follow him. And he says, follow me. I'm sure there are many more examples um, than in my quick Google search of, of all the cases where Jesus asked people to follow him. Um, but in each of these cases, the disciples get up and follow Jesus, either immediately or pretty soon after. So let me bring this Deuteronomy reading alongside those um, verses from the Gospel of Jesus saying, follow me. What can we be sure of when we're following God? Well, like um, Moses says in verses 12 to 16, um, following God brings blessings. Moses mentions increasing the Israelites' numbers, the fruit of their womb, the crops of the land. The Lord will keep them from disease. In the New Testament, we see the blessings in the Beatitudes, or the gifts of the Spirit we are given. The next thing, following God means we face hardships. The Israelites can recall the recent-ish events um, of the Exodus and Moses uses that to help the Israelites to trust God um, that he will pull through on his promises. Jesus obviously knows the Old Testament 
and the disciples at first put all their trust in him as we see that he, they immediately drop everything um, to follow him. And as we read on in, in the New Testament, we see the trust and the faith um, in the disciples grew, um, especially after the ascension. And in following God, the final thing, we see that it's best to cut ties with the things of this world. Um, as Moses says in um, verses 25 and 26, um, because a life with God at the centre is wholly better for us and is what we were created for, to be in close relationship with God. So this week, I've really been reminded in my prayer time and through study and conversations with other people um, that we are called to follow God's way and to invite the Holy Spirit to guide us in our daily lives. Um, I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a good bank holiday weekend and I'm sure we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye.